Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guide to the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about Season 4, Episode 10, titled Love at First Sight. It originally premiered on January 15th, 1988. Hello, 1988. (laughs) (laughs) It is written by Peter McCabe, who has two more episodes coming, and he is also the story editor for the entire season of season five. Oh, he's around for a while. Well, I don't know if that's a glowing (laughs) review for season five or not. (laughs) It is directed. I like this episode. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I'm I'm with you on that, John. I kind of like this one. Like we're it's like it's just like last week. We're we're getting better. We're running faster. It We're getting true. close to a sprint. Cows of October's coming. So, <laughs> <laughs> both literally and figuratively. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> <laughs> the director is Don Johnson. Oh, it, yeah, okay. So, be, for being a Don Johnson episode, I do like this one a lot better than his previous episode. Yes, because he also directed... Back in the World and By Hook or By Crook. Which is not a bad one. No, and also in Back in the World, uh, or is it By Hook or By Crook? I can't remember which one now has Iman in it. It's uh, Back in the World. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, he has a cast he likes to it's use. Back in the World. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Starting to get used to the Don uh, Johnson regulars. <laughs> Before we get started, can check in, see what's going on each other's lives. Guys, I have a weird thing to mention about how back the 80s are. And as you know, like with Ready Player One, that's not what I'm here to talk about. <laughs> that's a whole nother podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but as we've mentioned several times, the 80s are making a big resurgence. And I'm going to give you a couple things that you've forgotten about that are all of a sudden back. Fanny packs. Those are a thing again. I never knew about those. To get <laughs> I tried. I mean, I guess that's kind of a more of an early 90s thing, maybe. So, okay. Okay, I'll give you that. How about, Melissa? How about scrunchies? Oh, I love scrunchies. Actually, if I could find scrunchies in the store, I'd buy them now. I can't find them. They're back. <laughs> well, I got to go out and get them. <laughs> yeah, I was reading an article talking about that their fashion designers are using them. People on Instagram are wearing them. You could probably find yourself a scrunchie now. You read some weird articles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what? Dominic's at work reading up on uh, fanny packs. Like, yes, <laughs> finally. But here's the one you never expected. Seeing a surge in sales so far in 2018 are cassettes. Now, you can attribute most of that to the Guardians of the Galaxy soundtrack. Mm-hmm. And they did only sell um, not even 200,000 total albums on cassettes. But they're growing. But Why? It's not like vinyl <laughs> where you could argue like it sounds better, even though, like, I don't know, I can't tell. You, you don't buy an old boombox and like it sounds better than my MP3 player. It just doesn't. I don't think it's the people that we had them in the 80s. They're buying them. I think it's like the young kids now. For example, our son, 11 year old, he wants tapes bad. Mm-hmm. We, were, we were going to Goodwill. He's like, looks good for tapes. He's, I'm like, we don't have a tape player. <laughs> what are we going to play on? Like? I money might on have an old Walkman around here. I'm going to put that on eBay. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. <laughs> See, if the young people would stop wasting all their money on condoms to sort them on YouTube, they would have more <laughs> money. That way they wouldn't have to go buy 25 cent cassette tapes at the Goodwill. <laughs> True story. <laughs> but yeah, that's now vinyl has seen a resurgence for a long time now, but cassettes. Believe it or not, they're making a resurgence. Hmm. Hit fast forward and wait for, and hopefully you stop at the right time. Have a little celebration when you hit it exactly between two songs and you just nailed it because you just knew like it took this long. Then I had to stop. They'll never get that feeling, Hmm. though, where you tape it off the radio. You put the piece of tape over the little (laughs) holes and you tape it on the radio. You're like, I got it right. Right after the DJ stopped talking, I I pushed record and I I didn't forget to stop so I don't have the commercial in it. I would do that all the time. God dang, I love that song. And there's like a commercial for Mattress Land (laughs) in there with it. It's better when the DJ throws it to the song. Hey, this is that's the exact reason why I never heard any Sheena Easton tapes. (laughs) Whenever I need to record some off the radio, I'm like, sorry, Sheena. Like, I'm going to have to put some tape over you and record this. <laughs> Your mom does strike me as someone who would listen to Sheena Easton. <laughs> well, we got a DJ episode. As me and John mentioned, we kind of like this one, too. It has a recurring cast member who's playing someone different. As usual. <laughs> as usual. So let's go talk about this episode. Mm-hmm. So I think we're going to have a lot of fun with the uh, adult themes that <laughs> I'm ready. are in this episode. 
<laughs> All right, so we open up, and Sonny is explaining the type of guy that he is and <laughs> kind of flirting with the camera, pushing his hair yeah. back, you know, saying you can swing Sonny by likes his boat. boats, mm-hmm. alligators, alligators, pastels, yep. long walks on the beach. Fashionable girls. Uh, racquetball. Like- yeah, apparently he plays racquetball. Yeah, that's a lie. <laughs> that's a lie. I've never seen that man play racquetball. And he says, give him a call if you want some fun under the sun. I want some fun. <laughs> <laughs> so I like I have... when he turns the tape in to the guy at the front. You know, he kind of hands him the tape, you know, kind of looks around for the adult section. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the beads? He also... Ask the person behind the counter. It's like, how do I get connected with these 10s and 11s you got in your catalog? And you see the people on the TVs behind the counter. And you're like, Sonny, I wouldn't hold your breath. Like, <laughs> maybe a four or five. Like, that's probably the peak that you'll be able to get Excuse here. Excuse me? Except for Iman. But everyone else. Like, oh, yeah. I, was gonna say, like, I thought you were trying to say he was in the 10. I was like, really? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, no, the other girls were not 10s. <laughs> how do you feel about cats? <laughs> I have six. <laughs> we cut to the sundown apartment. They're responding is, to a, they're responding to a call. Obviously, yes. someone called the cops, <laughs> which is also a great place to meet quality singles. It says singles on the thing. It's exactly. a singles it's community. For single community. I kind of thought like the maybe they were playing Sonny's video inside. That's why the <laughs> cop gets sick and runs out of the apartment. <laughs> <laughs> well the maid like found body she brings the cops over they kick open the door and then they kind of hint at, at and like obstacles running and then immediately runs out that um the victim is missing an appendage of his body and that's what the brutal aspect of this case is a very important one if you are a male <laughs> if you're a single male living at the sundown apartments if you're a male i don't think it's gonna be single for that to be important you like to pee don't you <laughs> i do have a question before we get too deep into this episode right out of the <laughs> gate <laughs> why is he missing it what I don't happened <laughs> now i have a question about continuity in miami vice here and they kind of attack it here in this episode they kind of give you a few answers to it but when sunny plays sunny burnett a very very important part of his character of his undercover persona is he lives on that boat and he mentions it in the video that yeah, i got this boat you can come come visit me on this boat and in previous episodes people just randomly show up to his boat and especially people that he's investigating, they just randomly show up. He now lives with Caitlin. Mm-hmm. So that means and in the episode, this happens throughout the episode, too. He has to, like, invite them over there, make sure that he's there. And yeah, he's, like, waiting around. Like, yeah. So what about all those person- chance encounters that he had, like, with Evan, where he just showed up? Also, where was Elvis? Lies. He wasn't on that boat. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin is allergic to alligators. Oh, I'm sure she's allergic to so, a lot of things. Uh, yes, Sonny had to leave him on the boat. And... Yeah, she's learned a lot of things like fun and you know, <laughs> being a supportive wife, you know. That kind of thing. So after the officer comes out of the room and throws up after seeing someone missing a dick, <laughs> we go to the opening credits. <laughs> now, before we get started, we do want to stop right here when we come back from the opening credits and talk about our guest stars here because we do have a couple of them that are reappearing throughout this episode and play a pretty important part of the story and there's actually a few more of them than normal yeah so normally we kind of just talk about the guest stars as they pop up but guest stars are a little unique this week in that well for one we have sheena easton and tuki a smith back who were both in in Like a Hurricane, which is only a few episodes ago, Tuki A. Smith being the fashion model who uh, I mentioned was in a long-term relationship with Robert De Niro, and Sheena Easton being the UK reality show contestant turned star and actress. Other than that, we also had Iman back. Iman, who played Dakota in the episode Back in the World, All, you, you might remember her as the Somalian fashion model and actress who was uh, married to David Bowie from 92 until he passed. Goddamn you, David Bowie, yeah. making it into every Vice episode. Oh, oh. Yep. <laughs> and this is going to be a David Bowie heavy episode. He's going to show up in the music and a few other things. Other than the the reoccurring guests, we have Laura Piper, who plays Tracy. She was in 13 episodes of a show called Key West, 
but she was in mostly 48 episodes of a show called Head of the Class. She would have that in common with our other guest appearance, Lori Pet. Petty, who was in 10 episodes of Head of the Class. <laughs> she also did 12 episodes of Thorns and 10 episodes of a show called Booker, as well as she actually did better as far as movies go. She uh, was in Point Break, Cadillac Man, A League of Their Own, Free Willy, and in the Army now. And then for some reason, things just kind of peppered off from there. No fault to Polly Shore. <laughs> Looking at you, Polly. <laughs> Have you seen in the army now? <laughs> yeah. Hey, that's what she gets. For, so that's... for Gina Davis letting her win. Oh, I don't talk about that. I can't stand yeah. her in that movie. Her character is like the she's such a baby. <laughs> Gina Davis takes care of her all that time, lets her do all that stuff, and she's such a big old baby crying about it. So our last guest star is Annabelle Gerwich, who plays Terry. And she is best known as the original host of TBS's classic in a movie, in which mm. they would play a movie, and then she would also basically cook a recipe that had some kind of that was some kind of pun of the movie. Mm. Uh, she did that from ninety six to two thousand two. She currently hosts a show called Wasted on the Planet Green Channel, <laughs> whatever that is. But she also she's written a number of books, including writing and directing a documentary called Fired: the Tales of the Canned, Cancelled, Downsized, and Dismissed. And the, it is based on essays she wrote after she was fired by Woody Allen because. She, quote, looked retarded, among other insults. Holy crap. <laughs> are, we, are we supposed to be yeah. surprised that Woody Allen would say something like that? <laughs> oh, wow. Just saying. <laughs> she, Not she's really also talking. guest appeared in some TV episode of Seinfeld and a couple episodes of Dexter. She was also in uh, The Cable Guy, fired by Woody Allen. <laughs> that is, um, that was an unexpected quote. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a quote people it was a quote <laughs> it was said <laughs> when we come back from the opening credits where you have a quick stop at an office where someone's looking through a book of people that uh, melissa you notice something right out of the gate from the video they all look service. like pedophiles <laughs> It looks like, I'm, I'm sorry, but have you ever looked at the people w like uh, that live in your area that have been <laughs> just saying when you go look at the sex register, that sexual offenders registry, that's what it looked like. <laughs> Not a glowing review of I want to date these people. <laughs> the person finds someone and rewinds the same part over and over again, just saying on my own now, on my own now, on He's my own He's got the now. biggest hair you've ever seen. <laughs> He's divorced. He's on his own now. He's all alone. Over at the Crockett household, Sonny is late again. And he's mad that she didn't wake him before 9 a.m. And this is something we've heard before when he last time he had a rich girlfriend. Whatever you know, her name was. <laughs> that time when Tubbs got punched repeatedly in the face because Sonny couldn't get up in time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yes. I think he should invest in an alarm clock and stop <laughs> waiting for his wives. Yeah, get your own house out of bed. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, it's your typical couple fight, you know? He wants to watch these cassettes of hookers, and she wants to go to London and bang, bang Robert Plant. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's <laughs> that was the basis of the conversation. And I was like, this is gross, you two. Like, please stop. Can we please cut this out of the episode? It's like when your parents are fighting. And yeah, because then he says to her, he says, hey, I'm not going anywhere after what you did to me last night. Oh, gross. Uh, oh. <laughs> I thought I was Come telling him, I'm like, why is it so gross to see him happy? <laughs> like, almost not natural. I'm like, what's wrong with him? Why is he so happy? It's like the same thing when Tubbs gets a girlfriend. It's like, why? Why are you guys so happy? I don't like this. <laughs> well, back at the precinct, it's all hands on deck because someone's cutting off willies. <laughs> the men are all taking it quite personal, too. Oh, yeah. Someone, somebody said some, somebody has a real hate for the male genitalia. <laughs> so, of course, in the whole team meeting, the ladies are supposed to work the pimps. Of course. Because they found some powder on the person who's missing the willy. <laughs> It matches hookers, <laughs> I guess. And the duo are supposed to go question the pimps. And so I text him to go talk to the DA. I mean, they got to give him something. Why don't... Okay, but I asked Dominic this. How come they don't make him be a John or something? Like, he would be the perfect... <laughs> <laughs> you tell me he doesn't look like he needs to pay for it? <laughs> Instead of the girls having to be hookers all the time. 
<laughs> so then we have a really fast scene at a club where Gina's working the girls that work for pimps and talking to a woman at this club. And she's saying that video dating is a new hotness right now. It's super easy to get into. Lots of money to be made. And you don't share your money with any pimp. You're still being a hooker, basically. You're just doing it through the video yep. dating. But she doesn't have a man after her man cut her in the neck. And his name is Choo Choo. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe you shouldn't be hanging out with someone named Choo Choo. <laughs> so is the it duo... just me or is Choo Choo not important in, at, in the grand scheme of things in this episode at all? No, it's not. But, no. but the name is. <laughs> the next scene is dedicated 100% to Choo Choo. And then he is only mentioned one more time in the rest of the episode. Yeah. Because the duo show up. They find Choo Choo getting ready to stab somebody. <laughs> Which, he by runs. the way, bad timing. <laughs> they catch him. He says he was just there to visit his mom. Yeah. They arrest him. And then you hear <laughs> later that he got released on bail and he skipped town. Choo Choo with a dead end. <laughs> <laughs> the end of the Choo Choo storyline. <laughs> Thank God, though. <laughs> I wrote down later. It's like, I wonder what's happening with the Choo Choo investigation. <laughs> I must know. Where is Choo Choo? <laughs> <laughs> Over at the video dating office, uh, Tubbs and White Tech go in and they go talk to the owner slash manager. They say that someone that solicits on the through the service got murdered. They want to see all the tapes and they show them a warrant, yeah. which they actually did their work ahead of time this time. We, we want to see all of your videos, starting with the sluttiest ones. <laughs> yeah. Where's the nudes? <laughs> My favorite part about this is the manager owner is saying everything's copacetic. Everyone wants to just make some boom boom and everything is legal. <laughs> yeah, they make their boom boom and it's legal. <laughs> the phone rings and it's Sunny calling for Tubbs. Tubbs takes the call and this is the last time we hear of Choo Choo where Sunny says that Choo Choo walked and they found another body. Sorry, but Choo Choo walked. <laughs> I was in my head like chugga chugga he, Choo Choo. He got on the next train going anywhere. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> He can walk. He's a choo-choo. And the new body is missing its wing. We're starting to get a pattern here, guys. <laughs> this is now both the people that we saw in the beginning. So when the first time we're in this office and the person's going through the tapes, like look at two different people. And so now this is the other person mm -hmm. that, that, that they were looking at. So now both those people are dead. And their dicks are missing. Who knows where their dicks go? Like, they're not there with the body. This just is still the long-haired guy who's just divorced. Yes. <laughs> Maybe she... Well, he's getting them. out of hand. So the F so now even the FBI has got to step in. So but, but now why? we're going to beat the head of the FBI Penis Crimes <laughs> Task Force. Who hide behind trees and then pops out. <laughs> like He's like, yes. He's serious, guys. He's been doing this for 10 years. If you mess with a penis... Yeah. He's gonna get you. But he's never caught the person. He says that this person has done this in several other cities. Three people here, three people there, and then they move on. He hides behind a tree to tell you the knowledge. I don't understand that part. You'd be surprised what what people look like who commit penis related crimes. <laughs> Not your average person. Not the guy hiding behind the tree because I thought he was suspicious all along. <laughs> Are we sure? Has anyone looked at the I know. There FBI was a day I was like, watch. Watch. The FBI guy who spent 10 years hunting the penis murderer <laughs> is the one who's actually the penis murderer. He's so crazy the whole time, too. Also, he's like really attracted to Crockett and he's like making comments like, oh, all you pretty boys, you blonde haired, fair skinned. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got this assignment as a punishment, and then they just lost track of him, and he's just been gone yeah, for 10 years. True. They're like, nah, just let him go. <laughs> we have another quick scene where we see the person again flipping through the book and looking at tapes and stops on one guy, and this guy... Is a douche. <laughs> His name is, is Tony douche. Mason. Come on down to Mason Motors. I'll sell you <laughs> a used car. He's like doing... Isn't he the one that was doing the... No, that's a different one that was doing the... Rhyming. No, this guy is oh. the one. Oh, with the weird I, eyes. I can, yeah, I can, I can. I like the eyes. Yeah, I like the eyes. He's still a douche. <laughs> <laughs> it's all. I don't like the body. I don't like the the smile. I like the eye. That's where I look. The eyes. <laughs> Over at the precinct, they're talking to the FBI. The killer has exclusively worked through these video services. Could be a man and woman. They have no idea this the the special penis investigation unit has no leads. But he just keeps calling it a man though. <laughs> 
He's like, he, he, he. And they're like, okay, but is it a woman? And he's like, he, she, I don't know. He. (laughs) I just love that when he tells Crockett that he's the bait, Crockett gets this like shocked, worried look on his face. And it's like, FBI guy, usually we use innocent witnesses for that. (laughs) Yeah, I know. (laughs) Can't I get you some witness person to be the bait? (laughs) (laughs) The only thing that has in common here is that they all have terrible, terrible mullets, just like Sonny. It's very true. They all have bad hairstyles. Yes. <laughs> Over at the Crockett house, Sonny's just back thinking really hard. I mean, it's like it's hurting me watching how hard he's thinking. <laughs> he's in the long division. It's hard. Okay. He doesn't have any paper or anything. I, I love with the way he's so like nonchalantly trying to play off. Like it's okay. He he has to have this second life where he deals with hookers all the time like oh it's nothing honey i mean i just might have to bang a few hookers that's all (laughs) he says to her that he's been preoccupied and she wants him to just ignore his work but this is everything that he warned her about yeah i mean this is what happens when you marry someone after you've known them for an hour okay (laughs) he told her he's like i have this job i have to go out all night sometimes i have to pretend like i'm this i have to all the time i pretend i'm this other person who has to date other women, you idiot. Like, what did you think was going to happen when you married him? He has a persona. Well, he has this... a separate phone line for it. <laughs> I mean, what did you think? Well, he was all this like, backyard thing wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, <I know>. <laughs> <laughs> we get a nice Saturday guy montage. <laughs> and we find out that Miami has quite a few adult bookstores. <laughs> yes. He's just cruising down the main boulevard in Miami. And it's like. Liquor store, porno shop, liquor store, porno shop. <laughs> Dominic never store. wanted to go to Miami more. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Do you think those places are still there? <laughs> and it keeps showing that part where it jumps back to where they're in the studio when oh, they God, first met and they're part. singing and like, smiling at each other. It's like, why is anyone smiling in this? The song is terrible. Also, why are you so happy? <laughs> I have an observation. Throughout this whole episode and also the flashback scene where he's flashing back to being in the studio, he's wearing the same freaking shirt. It's the same shirt. Does Sonny only own one shirt? They must have filmed it <laughs> all on the same day. Well, it bugs or me. Or the same like three <laughs> yes. days oh, no, or something. Be. Because he's wearing the same shirt through the whole episode. Yeah, so all the Sheena Easton stuff was uh-huh. all filmed at one time. She has no idea what's coming. <laughs> she's like i'm on this great show i'm gonna be a reoccurring character nope not to break up all the uh, the sad guy montage but crockett calls in and him and swy tech are enjoying watching all of these uh videos of very lonely white people <laughs> that's what tubbs is calling it <laughs> so i was like man you gotta come over and check this out <laughs> <laughs> they also get another call that, and they said they found a, another body. So Crockett overhears the conversation with Tubbs and the FBI guy while, while he's on the phone. It's like, I'll go take care of it. So, or I'll meet you there. I'll meet you there. Yeah. And so that's where we go, uh, where another he's going missing next. missing unit. <laughs> we do have one stop before we get there to the murder scene where we're back at the Crockett house because Caitlin had called someone and turned out to be Angie. And so Angie comes over and they're having like a little uh, uh, friend to friend talk about how, what it's like to be married and angie says that um sorry caitlin says that she doesn't want to be bothering sonny because she knows he's working hard but she also wants to know what's bothering him so much and angie says you got to learn to suffer in silence and i think it's mostly because not because of sonny doesn't want to hear your complaining but angie doesn't want to hear her complaining either yeah she's like <laughs> yes <laughs> she tells her exactly what i said you knew what you were doing marrying a cop he's a cop he can't tell you things <laughs> So there's that. No, so Angel's like, you really pay me minimum wage. Like, I'm not here for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe Sonny is sparing her from the dick collector stories that he's having to endure. Maybe she doesn't want to know about that. Okay, but later on, he tells her about the vibrator. So. <laughs> But, <laughs> but oh he, he wants Caitlin to feel okay <laughs> and sorry. not know that his dick is in peril <laughs> investigating this case. <laughs> yes. Something was in peril of that vibrator. <laughs> <Like a constant laughs> <threat. laughs> Something was in dire peril of a vibrator. Hold that. <laughs> Hold that thought. We're getting there. We're Hold that there. thought. Let's get to the ne- the the latest Vic, who is a Tampa a former Tampa Bay Buccaneer running back. He used the ball and now he's missing his balls. <laughs> Dominic was drinking water. He's gonna choke. <laughs> 
don't worry. It was one of the players from the winless Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We're all right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Not even, you know, yeah. you remember them old, old uniforms with like the, <laughs> like the pastel orange colors? Yeah, the bad years. <laughs> and then the FBI agent accuses Sonny of not banging enough people on the video dating service. That way they could figure out who the killer is and Sonny storms off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Sonny's response is, bang them all if I have to. <laughs> Sonny goes back to the precinct. He's just working late. He gets a voicemail from Carol, so he answers it while she's leaving the message. And I do love Sonny's voice, uh, not voicemail. That's a modern day thing. Voice. His answering yeah. machine message, which says, quote, this is Burnett. When you hear the beep, tell me something I don't know already. And I'm like scrambling like, uh, Sonny, um, <laughs> pandas mate for life. Uh, platypuses are venomous. Uh, 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 a hoagie and a sub are the same thing. <laughs> Did you know that? Oh, what is he yeah, doing? I, on the side note, I always hate because every once in a while, you still get, you still call someone with an answering machine. And I always hate when they pick up when I'm in the middle of leaving a message. I, <laughs> Oh, oh, God. Oh, geez. Oh, hold on. Hold on. I, I, like, I, I just figured out what I was going to say. Let me finish what I'm saying. Yeah, Be with you in a minute. Hang up. <laughs> when he answers the phone, he talks to this tall brunette. They decide to go meet at the Foxy Boxing Club. Interesting choice. Yeah. A date and Foxy Boxing. <laughs> when? There's hardly anyone watching the Foxy Boxing, too. Seems like such a waste. <laughs> yeah, you were very disappointed. <laughs> such a waste in boxing. <laughs> well it's kind of an awkward date too i mean she's kind of weird for a hooker <laughs> she's not a hooker she's just really forward mm-hmm. she's and also didn't we, all, an didn't we start like this Taylor. episode yes. <laughs> didn't we start this episode learning about how these videos are basically escort services <laughs> well it's just basically like nowadays the craigslist so she's backstage. kind of weird for <laughs> yeah, a hooker <laughs> yeah and no, and no one was gonna get paid though so that's the difference. <laughs> well she says some I'm electric stuff. and I want you to break my circuits. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. When she said, when, you know what I thought when I saw you electric? And he's like, okay. <laughs> I don't think uh-huh. that, that Sonny gets subtle. <laughs> so we go to Carol's place. Now, before we get into this, <laughs> into this story, I can't. I just want to make sure we're clear here that if Sonny wasn't married, what's up with the he- creepy clown? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, no. We did, talked about did that. Did you too. see it? Did you yep, see the painting in the background it. of I the creepy it. clown? <laughs> You know, that's all I focused on. <laughs> okay, that should be a sign to run, Sonny. <laughs> I just want to make sure we're clear here that if Sonny wasn't married, he would have totally boned Carol. No, he wouldn't have. Yes. Oh, absolutely. You're thinking he would of have. Tubs. <laughs> Are you being clown lady? I don't know. I think I'm <laughs> no. with Melissa on this one. I know. He wouldn't have. <laughs> she comes out. Andre tells him to close his eyes. He's like, what are you doing in there? He's like, no idea what doing. And he's got to be thinking, please don't cut off my dick. Yeah, exactly. He's like, oh, uh, are you missing your whip? <laughs> he closes his eyes. He's obviously cheating. He can see through his fingers. Well, she thank comes God. Down, something shiny in her hand. When she gets close, he jumps up, punches her right She's in the face, pulls his him. gun. <laughs> and he sees and hears what it is here's it vibrating in her hand okay and she's yelling at him saying like what are you some kind of maniac she was humming at him with that thing what was she going to do with it why did she want to tell you her bum was not safe no it was an assault with a deadly sex toy i'm telling you he did the right thing what was she gonna what if she put it in his mouth you don't really just you have to ask her she just don't stick stuff up there Hey, close your eyes and open your mouth. <laughs> this is never going to be okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> she deserved to be punched right in her face. Sorry. <laughs> Maybe she has good toy I'm hygiene. I'm telling you, okay, the but creepy the- clown should have been a giveaway. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I can just imagine. Sunny's stinking the whole time. Please don't hurt my dick. Please don't hurt my dick. And then all of a sudden... <laughs> she <in> his mouth. <laughs> so the next day at the Crockett house, Caitlin's having a good laugh at this almost assault Sonny had and then him assaulting a woman with the dildo. <laughs> For the record, that was not a dildo, it was it a vibrator? True. Different. All right, you got me there. Sonny's making her feel better, saying that they're gonna make it after all, and then 
at the very end of, of calming her down about the whole hooker and being attacked with a dildo and everything, <laughs> he goes, oh, yeah, by the way, Zwytek's going to show up and add my hooker line. Yeah, <laughs> I need another line so just so you can get a hold of me faster. What's weird is that it seemed like she was okay with understanding, like, this is his job and she could trust him. And, and then he says that they're going to put in this line. She's like, I know you're bringing your work into our bedroom. And then she storms off like, damn. He just told you the lady came at him with a vibrator. Yeah. Hey, yeah, hey, you were hey. okay and you thought that was funny? <laughs> really defend Caitlin here a little bit. I mean, he just kind of throws it out there like, yeah, they're going to come and add a line so women can call and ask me out on dates. So, Any other oh, yeah, normal husband. Answer it. Okay, yeah, but what I'm saying is if you have a regular husband that works at an office job, he came to, he me, comes up and tells me, hey, I need a line for my hookers. Yeah, I might be a little – but she knows what he's doing. Yeah. <laughs> also, she's a celebrity. Well, She's taking his word. She's taking his word that he has a case. She has no idea. What if this is just all ploy for him to cheat on her? Once again, don't marry someone you just met, and this won't be a problem. And it won't be a problem in like four episodes anyway. <laughs> well, who's she supposed to marry? Number 5271, who says he's a mean drunk with dirty socks? <laughs> <laughs> She's supposed to marry the poet guy. Make rhymes about people. Quick stop where we see the killer go going through the tapes again. Picks out another one at the precinct. No lead on the hookers or pimps. Castillo wants them to watch all the videos again, but pay attention this time, God damn it! So back to the Crockett house where Crockett shows up with a box of tapes, and Caitlin comes bounding down the stairs because they had date night, but now date night is canceled. <laughs> date night's now watching videos and looking at pictures of creeps and hookers. <laughs> again, she's okay with that. She's like, "All right, fine, it's okay." There'll yeah, be other she, concerts. That thought, that's my that. line ringing. <laughs> <laughs> While they're sitting down going through the tapes and looking at the pictures he gets a call he has to answer it because now the phone line is there now it's someone named tracy want to go have dinner so now he's got to go out and then he calls tubs and he tells them to run a trace and she leaves while he's having those okay that's conversations. A, this will be the only time i defend her because she was like leaning in and telling him like i'm so glad i found you and i don't have to do this and you're you know you're perfect for me like trying to kiss him and then they're going to like, you know, they're they're being really romantic. Then he has to he jumps up to answer the phone for some other hooker. <laughs> so, yeah. OK, I can yeah. give her that one. And he's I all like, hey, one. baby, how you doing? I'm yeah, it's, you. Be, yeah. it's his job. Yeah, I know. Like, he's but undercover. Still. He's supposed to do it. I mean, yeah, no, I, I know. But and, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's that's a hard one. <laughs> on a side note, I don't feel bad for Sonny Crocodile. He's got such a hard life. He just got a date. With a hot blonde, and I'm supposed to feel bad because it interrupts Chinese food with his hot wife po pop star. <laughs> okay, but we need to discuss uh, that hot, blonde. Pop star wife, sorry. <laughs> we need to discuss the blonde. She's not hot, though. <laughs> they're all making fun of her. That's what they're doing. Like, Tubbs and him are making fun of her. Like, she looks like a linebacker. <laughs> Uh, I missed that part. <laughs> yeah, they're making jokes about her. <laughs> I did. I did too. <laughs> so I'm going to yeah, back up here on Sunny a little bit because she's not understanding. He's putting literally his dick on the <laughs> line for this case. <laughs> and also his life, which is also his dick. But <laughs> but she, do she doesn't know that. She's not in the meetings. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, that's true. But that's why he's trying to protect her. He's not telling her about the penis <laughs> problems. <laughs> he goes to dinner with Tracy. Tracy asks him to feel her muscle. And also she likes to do things, lots of things outdoors. She, uh, she's really athletic. That's why she's got linebacker she muscles. Popsicles. <laughs> eating popsicles. <laughs> she likes to see her what would you like to eat a popsicle? <laughs> She says, also, why don't you come back to my place? He's like, yeah, okay, I got to call my business partner first. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> I have to see if I have an excuse to get out of this. We're starting to get a theme of creepy women. It's almost like he has a type. I think it's supposed to be a reflection on these video dating it's like services. They're desperate. Like they're super desperate. Yeah, that's what Or it is. they're mm. just like, they're kinky. Yeah. And it's hard to like find someone go to a bar and do yeah. that. Like, yeah. Yeah, no, I think for the women, mm. I definitely think it was a, it's like a reflection that, that's hard to date and that they're, they're just trying really hard. There's a lot of competition. So she's trying really hard to be like, hey, you know what? I'm fun. Come back to my place. Then they get back to the place and it's just like, you know what? I'm not the first date type of girl, but hey, you know, can I go by your boat sometime? You know? <laughs> <laughs> Which means Sonny's like, God you damn know it. what I'm starting to notice? Be there. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you know what I'm starting to notice, though? There's a lot fewer hookers than I was originally promised. <laughs> <laughs> so now Sonny's got to wait all night on the boat because Tracy might show up at some random time. And I did skip over that. We also see the guy that the 
killer saw in the video, he walks by. So he's at the same restaurant at the same time Sonny was there. It's supposed to insinuate that he's on a date with the killer. Yeah. So now it's to the boat. Sonny's just hanging out, drinking coffee, seeing a chaser come by because you know he doesn't live at the boat anymore. So he has to go hang out there now. Whenever he thinks someone's going to come by, he hears footsteps. He runs behind the stairs. He pulls out his gun. When he sees a foot come down, he grabs Caitlin, not Tracy coming to cut his dick off, but Caitlin Sneaking throws her around. down, pulls his gun on her, and she's like, what has this case done to you? It's like, he got attacked by a vibrator, and he might lose his dick. It's all right, Caitlin. Also, <laughs> he's a little jumpy. <laughs> he's, a, he's a pretend drug dealer. <laughs> what if someone's you coming to shoot you could him? Did just well, sneak up on his boat? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey. It is is five o'clock in the morning. He doesn't know where her husband is, so she she went to the boat to to look for him. So yeah, I mean that doesn't mean he him. has to like try and shoot her in the face. But you can't <laughs> surprise someone who's like already he's he's an undercover policeman who people come and hit him on the head with things in his boat. <laughs> you know who the blame well, all he's got to do is a phone call. <laughs> She's at home all worried. Well, that's probably what he did. He probably told her he was staying at the boat. And she was like, okay, I'll go over there and hang out with him then. Oh, I don't have an answer for that. Or <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she was trying to do something nice. Maybe she packed a, a breakfast. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. Enough. Let's get to the reporter missing his rod. <laughs> <laughs> it's that really fast scene where Sonny shows up and it's the latest bodies. They discover the latest body who's also missing his member. We also see at the This killers- is like the fifth rod removed. This is just getting out of hand, guys. <laughs> we also see at the killer's office desk that they finally got into Sonny's video. So now at the precinct, and this is where I started to wonder, like, are they just not going to investigate Choo Choo anymore? Like, are they just <laughs> <We're> not... <laughs> Choo Choo. Is Choo not a thing? Is gone now? <laughs> Sonny gets a call from a woman, and she wants to set up a date. This one's a little different, though. She's not... Not pushy. Or pushy or anything. And pastels and alligators <laughs> and for some <laughs> weird reason. The vice team pulls the tape. She started using the service a week before the murder started. Also lived in Dallas for a period of time, too. So this one needed to be a little bit more, more careful with Sunny. <laughs> Go back to her house, Sonny. <laughs> like, everything points to her. And the funny thing is, like, they're reluctant to accuse her. It's like, they're almost like... Uh, I don't know. She's kind of hot. I think she's too hot to be crazy. We, we might be barking up the wrong tree here, guys. Quick stop at the video dating service where the manager recognizes Lois, but can't say like he's seen her or with anyone else. Can't like actually match her to the missing man. No, that's the restaurant. Is that the restaurant? That's okay, the, that's the guy who live, who works at the restaurant. He's like, I've seen her. Because you don't miss a girl like that. She was in here last night with that guy. Yeah, he does say he like he's like I can't be a hundred percent sure. I, yeah, I can't pit, but she has been here. Basically, he couldn't put put them two together. That's what yeah. he's saying. Like I don't know. I just I, I've seen her because you don't miss her. Back at the Crockett house, Caitlin isn't happy now that they have a solid lead and realizes that his junk's in danger. <laughs> she finally <laughs> understands what's on the line. <laughs> yeah, She's... but I think at this point, Caitlin and her Boy Meets World haircut are on their way out. <laughs> yeah. Because she says that she's scared that a cop will show up one day and tell her how good a cop Sonny was. Well, the, first of all, that'll never happen. Don't worry about that, baby. It's all right. Because <laughs> it'll be Castillo, and he'll come and be like, he's dead. And he'll have the same look he has when anyone else dies. <laughs> so now we go to dinner. Goes well. Sonny, he's ready to bang another housewife. They leave to go back and to her. She seems totally normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's being really normal. They leave to go back to her place. They're having a drink. He sees a picture of her and her brother who look an awful lot alike. Oh, but it's not her and her brother. It's oh, just it's her brother just and brother. a man. Like another ah, man, gotcha. like fishing or something. Yeah. His name's Danny. Mm-hmm. This, she says, like, oh, yeah, we just look a lot alike. He's like, but you look really alike. <laughs> <laughs> and then she's got to go do something. She's like, it's getting in a shower or no, something? No, she's like, I, I have to, excuse me, I have to That's... go take care of something. He, he, Danny's around here somewhere. He lives with me. Yeah, it's weird. She she fixed him a drink. I think she called it Duxtable. <laughs> yeah, and then she just excuses herself and goes and takes a shower. I think what, what it's supposed to say is that, okay, so she says, you know, whatever. That's my brother. He lives here with me. He's somewhere around here. Whatever. Then she goes off. She goes, oh, hold on for one second. Goes off. I think it's supposed to say, because Crockett goes around and he looks in the brother's room. So she probably wouldn't have gotten the shower to pretend like she was the brother. Like he's there. Here he is in here or mm-hmm. whatever. And then, he, you know, so she wasn't like uh. pret- like trying to take a shower. It was like she was pretending like she turned well, it on. So it sounded like someone else was there. And then he finds. I'm a- going to be honest. At this at this point in the episode, 
I'm assuming that she is her brother. So, yes. but not quite in the way that it works out to. Um, I thought that she was a man who is now a woman, that she was the brother. Oh, I get what you're saying. So she used to be the brother. And- Sunny goes and digs through Danny's stuff and finds a card for the video dating service. So now, obviously, he's paying really close attention to her. He's got extra information. Then he leaves. They kiss. He leaves for, for the night. And then she goes back into, quote unquote, Danny's room and finds a knife and then frantically calls Sonny and says, I'm afraid for my life. I realize that Danny's been going around behind me and killing all the people I've been going on dates with. I'm not safe here. I need to come to you. And this is when Crockett is a known. terrible detective. <laughs> 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 she should have known something was up. Her brother used to cut all of her boyfriend's penises off. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that time he gave her that penis necklace and he was like, hey, look at all these penises I collected. <laughs> you didn't think that was strange? <laughs> so now they're on the boat. Lois says that Danny was possessive. You to come into her room at night she's really torn up but this is clearly an act before she's gonna kill him i mean the whole audience has got to be in on it on, on the note Sonny. here yeah except for sunny he's the only one that yeah. doesn't get it he's like oh i'm sorry this is a sad story you're telling me my <laughs> dick is totally fine <laughs> once again once again too hot to be crazy <laughs> yeah true she goes to the bathroom and Tubbs calls but the line is too staticky you can't make out what Tubbs is Damn trying to boat say phones. <laughs> <laughs> can't get a good connection on a boat it's all wobbly <laughs> Tubbs finally gets out there is no brother at the same time the Sonny gets stabbed in the shoulder he falls back she injected him with something ah that's what it was yeah, that's why he okay. got all like cloudy because she injected him with something that's what she does and so then he falls back he misses his gun that's in the drawer he falls back into the bathroom pulls the gun out of his ankle thank god for that ankle gun <laughs> shoots and kills lois mm-hmm. who danny. is actually danny question mark I'm not sure not sure hair is different clothes are different but the episode is not clear on what the deal is here I still think that she just dresses so up she, like a man. Like she's a woman, but she dresses okay, up like so, a man so and kills people. So what you're saying is that that's not just crazy Danny dressed up like a woman. Yeah. I th- yeah what I'm saying is I think that, she's, that it, she is a woman and that she dresses like a man when she kills people. I don't know. The episode no. doesn't have any answers. I that. think on purpose, though. We just end. Like after Sonny shoots and kills Danny or Lois, whoever it is, whoever they are, it just mm-hmm. freeze frames there. And then we go back to Crockett's house where Caitlin's nursing Sonny. And Sonny says, I'm taking some time off because I got hurt. And she's like, perfect. I'm going to L.A. because my song has reached number five on the charts. Yeah, her song's number five. She has to go to L.A. to do some promotional stuff. She's going like, to record oh. Robert Plant. Uh, she wishes. Something <laughs> about something about banging him. <laughs> L.A., not New York, though. <laughs> and that's the end of the episode. Like, we just end there. So, uh, like I mentioned at the beginning, like, this is a good episode. Questions at the end. Um, <laughs> Question it seems mark. To end, this was the first time where I wanted the episode really to keep going and not end, end in just that big shootout. Like, there needed to be some more answers that was happening at, at, at the end here. Yeah, I agree. Like, yeah. come back around and tell us, like, what was, why was she doing it? Yeah, you know, and I feel like they could have, too, because, I mean, they just, it just ends. And we never go back to the FBI guy who spent 10 years chasing her. You know, it's <laughs> like, there's, there, there is a scene in that where you could explain. And the FBI guy moves on to his new life for, you know, chases the next penis bandit. <laughs> well, something that has nothing to do with penis bandits. <laughs> There's no way to segue. <laughs> <laughs> something that has nothing to do with penis bandits is the music. Let's go talk about this week's music. All right, John, we got a little bit of new, a little bit of old, more Sheena Easton. I roll. I know. <laughs> what else you got for us this week, John? Well, let's just start with Sheena Easton because she basically sang, sang the exact same song that she sang basically two episodes ago. She sang I Got You, Babe, which is a cover of Cher's song. And why they picked that, you know. Melissa was saying while we were watching it is that it, it might have something to do with that she was able to act in it, but the record label forbid her from having her music in the episode. Yeah, because she's not doing any of her known music, her popular music, which you think, but it might might have been that she had like a record coming out and they're like, no, we don't want you to put it on that show. You can be on there, but don't use her music. So she had to come up with something to use. Okay, that's really weird because here's the fact I'm going to throw out before we move on. Miami Vice was basically one of the first five acting roles she had. 
Out of her first five acting roles, four of which she played cameos of herself, Vice was the only one that she actually played a different character who just happened to be a pop star modeled after herself. Hmm. Interesting. Vice, literally, out of the first five acting cameos that she had, was the only one where she didn't actually play Sheena Easton. She played a <laughs> Sheena Easton-like person. <laughs> Oh, um, <laughs> way one of those cameos in the show Alf. Oh my gosh! <laughs> I have not watched an Alf episode in a very long time, but as far as I remember, Alf never left the house. So did they just have Sheena Easton and like invite her over for brunch? Like, how did she show up at their doorstep? No, he did used to go out. He did. He okay. I I'm kind of an Alf expert. We watched it like <laughs> I watched it with the kids like three years ago or something. The whole thing. He did sometimes go out for once. For example, he started doing like a dating dating on by the phone and he met, <laughs> and he met this girl and she was blind. And that might be that episode that I'm thinking of. She was blind and he met her. At, oh. He went to her door to give her flowers. And he was like, you know, she was like, oh, I, I really like you. Hey, I want to date you. Based on voice only, I would date Alf. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he did uh, leave the curious. house sometimes. Did, did, yeah. he, did he wear a Because like, uh, from my uh, what I remember is, is him always being at the house. I don't remember him ever leaving. Yeah, so. I mean, it, it was very few times he got out of the house. But, yeah, but the, he did. Okay. All right. Alf aside, let's move on. Sheena Easton, thank you for showing up in our music. Now, we're going to talk about the song Ball of Confusion by Love and Rocket. Love and Rocket, whose first appearance was in the episode God's Work. We've already seen Rockets before. They're an English band founded in 85 by three former members of the band Bowhaus. I'm going to talk a little bit about each of the members and pretty much what they did after the band. John Haskins who was the bassist and vocalist. Uh, he also wrote books and plays. His plays included Anarchy and the Gold Street Wimpy and The Chateau and The Devil's Muse, which he also directed, mm. uh, among others. And then he also wrote a book called Who Killed the Moonlight and popped up in 2016's on charts with a single called The Day That David Bowie Died. Mm. Obviously, in homage to David Bowie. Once again, David Bowie showing up in our music. <laughs> he would also appear on albums for Jane's Addiction and Porno for Pyros. So, on a side note, the lead singer of Jane's Addiction, his side project was Porno for Pyros. Pretty much Haskins, man. He was like the most established, uh, uh, the most successful member. He also regularly displays art at galleries and is a resident DJ at several Hollywood hotspots. The other two members, so Kevin Haskins, the drummer, aside from his music career, he composed scores for movies, TV, and video games under the name Messi. <laughs> some, so, are some of those movies? Well, the most recent movies were The Crow 3 and What Lies Beneath. Uh, that's a Harrison Ford movie. He also composed for NBC's Third Watch, uh, and then advertisements, PlayStation 2, and Skechers, as well as <laughs> video games, Unreal Tournament. So finally, we have David Ash. David Ash was the guitarist and pretty much the lead singer. He's pretty much all about Bo House and Love and Rockets and the Music Man. Uh, <laughs> by far, has the best uh, had the best hair in the band. So uh, we can give him that. <laughs> We're going to move on from there, and before we get to the uh, the main event, we'll talk about the Ward Brothers, whose song Madness of, all, uh, of It All was in the episode. They are a British pop rock band made famous by their 1986 single, Cross That Bridge. They actually only released two albums, and, and pretty much because Cross That Bridge was being successful that it charted. Two albums were pretty much critical failures oh i mean they released a number of other singles none of them ever got even close to the song cross that bridge the band itself made up of dave derrick and graham ward now i believe they're brothers they're possibly brothers i noticed <laughs> that their wikipedia does not specifically note them to be brothers <laughs> I also found every single bio I could find on the Ward Brothers uh, was basically just a rip off of their Wikipedia. So we have no idea. Maybe they're not <laughs> brothers. Maybe they all just have the same last name. <laughs> Who knows? One of them could be from race or <laughs> 20 years older. We have no idea. Maybe they could be. Who knows? 
maybe they went to the same high school and say and had the same last name at the exact same time and then started a band <laughs> together. Maybe. <laughs> maybe Dave is Derek's cousin and Graham is Derek's dad, <laughs> which would make him Dave's. <laughs> It doesn't really matter. He split up in 1988. This song, Madness of It All, actually appeared in the 86 movie The American Way as well. Uh, And then their song, Why Do You Run, popped up in the 87 film Stakeout. Mm. And then a decade later, in 1996, they would show up out of nowhere with the new album, Wave Goodbye to Grandma. (laughs) It would be a commercial fair. Surprise. And the band's final release to date. Mm. Wave goodbye to Grail. No love That's for never Grandma. Work out. <laughs> <laughs> so let's get to Looking for Someone Love by the Stray Cats. Now, I actually like the Stray Cats and uh, didn't know as much about them going into this. They are a U.S. rockabilly band formed in 1979. They were formed by guitarist and vocalist Brian Setzer, double Mm. bassist Lee Rocker, and drummer Slim Jim Phantom. (laughs) (laughs) Now, John, whenever I think of the Stray Cats, I listen to any of their music, I immediately think it's a secret meaning about the life of, of cats. That every (laughs) song is about a cat. No, it's not, unfortunately. (laughs) Including this song. (laughs) <laughs> it's just a lonely cat looking for so, somebody to love. <laughs> you're probably not far off they're from originally from long island they were made popular by songs including stray cat strut rock this town and uh look at that cadillac See? In fact, Rock This Town is in the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame the most one of the songs that shaped rock and roll See? See? You can interpret every one of their songs. It's about a cat. <laughs> Look at that Cadillac. Yeah. Stray cat strut. strut. It. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, they were heavily influenced by 50s artists Eddie Cochran, Carl Perkins, and the Bill Haley and his Comets. They developed following in New York by frequently playing the, the famous venue CBGB and Max's Kansas City. They moved to the UK, though, after hearing about a revival of 50s Teddy Boy subculture in England. Now, let's get back to this whole cats thing. (laughs) Their first appearance in 79, uh, their first appearance in 1979 was under a number of different names. That included the Tomcats, the Teds, and Brian and the Tomcats. See? They've been the Stray Cats ever since, uh, since 83. Yeah, see, Ted? Ted would be a great cat name, by the way. Yeah. Like, see? Yeah, see, it's all would. about cats. Everything is cats. Everything. Yeah. Everything. Inside the drum. Cats. Yeah. Everything. <laughs> Mid-1980s, while they were being courted by some record companies, members of some pretty big bands started popping up at their shows. Members of the Rolling Stones, Ed Zeppelin, and The Who would just start showing up. Like, like people were, were digging their music so much. So their self-debut album in 1981... Uh, would feature three of their biggest hits, Rock This Town, Stray Catch, and The Runaway Boys. Their next album wouldn't actually see much success, but then they would release two more albums after that that would all that would all both chart. By 1984, musical and personal conflicts began to mount in the band, plus the fact that, you know, the band was starting to branch out and do other things. So Slim Jim Phantom had mar- had gotten married to Brack- actress Britt Eklund. Setzer was making guest appearances with other artists like Bob Dylan and Stevie Nicks. He was also hired as a concert guitarist for Robert Plant's side project, The Honey Drippers. What she knew was going to record in L.A. <laughs> band would also add former BMT guitarist Tommy Burns. They would do a Euro- European and then a U.S. tour. And their last show would be at the New Orleans World Fair, in which they would just call it quits. And actually, talking about it in 12, Setzer actually said that, you know, it was silly to break up the Stray Cats at the peak of their success, but that's pretty much what they did. So after they broke up, Rocker and Phantom would form a trio, Phantom, Rocker, and Slick, with Slick being former David Bowie guitarist Earl Slick. Damn it, David <laughs> Bowie. Get out of my music. Snuck in there. <laughs> I, have, I had my fingers crossed you were going to say I was Slick Rick. But... <laughs> Damn. Setzer would actually continue to work with Burns, but he would start doing solo work 
and eventually a project called the Brian Setzer Orchestra. Over the years, they would have many reunions and released many albums. Three or four times through the 90s and in the 2000s, they would get together, they would do a quick tour, release an album, and then break up again. Lastly, I'm going to talk about strange connections to the Stray Cats. Setzer was also the executive producer on the Drake Bell album, Ready, Steady, Go, on Surf Dog uh, Records 2014. Damn. Drake Bell, you might also know from Nickelodeon's The Amanda Show and Drake and Josh. (laughs) Also voices a voice on the Fairly Odd Parents trilogy, TV movie trilogy. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so lee rocker by the way he is the son of classical clarinetists stanley and naomi drucker who played in the uh, new york philharmonic for years and his sister roseanne is a country singer so mm. um, must not be a famous country singer because there was no link to any other wikis <laughs> Also, we know the flute oh. is metal, but we know that the clarinet cannot. Well, Lee Rucker plays the double bass. Um, <laughs> he didn't take after his the clarinetists. In fact, he went against <laughs> them. They probably don't even speak to him anymore. <laughs> and then Phantom's most recent projects include the trio Men Walking, which features Kurt Brandon, Mike Peters, and Captain Sensible. <laughs> it was a name you guys might recognize. Yes. <laughs> which I also want to point out that if you include Slim Jim Phantom, that is not a trio. That is a quintet. <laughs> <laughs> that aside, he was also in a band called The Head Cat. And he was in that band with Lemmy until he died. Mm. Once again, more cats, <laughs> a little Lemmy. <laughs> <laughs> music. John, of course, this took a turn at the end here. Now, <laughs> things I wasn't prepared for, but you will never be able to convince me that this, all of the straight cast music is not about the weird straight cats <laughs> around their apartment. <laughs> you know, those cats have the weird eye stuff going on, one eye closed. Honestly, honestly, think you're right. In fact, I think one of them must have thought he was actually a cat, and that's who wrote all the songs. <laughs> that's probably why they broke up. They were probably like, we gotta get away from, we gotta, we gotta get away from Phantom. All he wants to write about is cats. <laughs> well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. I think, I think we're feeling good now. Everything is going good. Okay, all right. I'm getting my feet underneath me. We're doing all right. Let's go give our final thoughts on this episode. All right, John, why don't you kick off this week? What are your final thoughts on this episode? I think you were right. It's getting better every week. And I really like this episode. We're kind of having to go through the Sheena Easton, Crockett being married thing. You know that that's going to get mixed into the show. Overall, the episode just with the murderer and him trying to juggle the case and the new marriage. And, and we get we get a little bit more involvement than we did last week with some of the other characters and get a lot of tub or, or anyone. So it was nice to kind of get, get back into the vice crime mode. You know, I do feel like that there were some major questions at the end of the episode that I, I, I could have used answered. What did she do with all the penises? <laughs> uh, That's um, the top question. Why was the FBI guy so creepy? <laughs> Does he have the penises? <laughs> Who has them now? We must know. Why is David Bowie keep showing up in my music and guest stars? It felt like we got back a little more toward season two ish, you know, a little bit more toward we got who done it. We got the police side. We got a little bit of comedy in there. We got goofiness. But all in all, I, I liked it. I think we're getting better, and I think we're starting to get toward the end of the uh, Sheena Easton, the the Katie marriage. So <laughs> I, I think we're we're over the hump now. <laughs> yeah, no, we're close. We're very close. Melissa, what are your final thoughts on this episode? I can almost taste it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, I like this episode, <laughs> even with the Caitlin parts. I understand that's got to be in there, and it is. It's actually we're always complaining about how it's not realistic that none of them are dating anybody or no one's in a relationship. So it does give it that other side to the stories that, like, yeah, if someone is an undercover cop, they have to do these crazy things and they get caught up in this lifestyle. And if you're married, like. 
your SOL. Like you have to be, your spouse has to understand that this is just your job, which is why they don't last very long. <laughs> She's annoying, but I understand they need her in there. <laughs> <laughs> I like the episode. I liked, I still want more Tubbs. I feel like Tubbs is not being utilized correctly. He's just doing like the backup stuff and he's not, and I don't like, I always like Tubbs and Crockett together. I don't like the whole separating them out, but you know. Yeah, I'll take Tubbs like, anywhere. Like they I can almost get it. moved Tubbs into uh, like they're they're almost partnering Tubbs with Zytek now. Yeah, and I think it has something to do with the Caitlyn storyline, and so they're trying to put the focus on you know Crockett and Caitlyn, and they have this, and you know so that would be another barrier for them, right? If the Tubbs was over all the time and he was hanging out with Tubbs all the time, I understand it'll go back to normal once everything goes back. <laughs> Once the big things happen, he'll go back to normal and I'll be okay. But uh, I want to know why that lady had that vibrator and if it was clean. <laughs> what were her plans? What was she going to do to Sunny? This is a good episode. Uh, they hit all the chords. It's like John was saying, it's got a little comedy. It's serious. It's a case that's supposed to be working. This isn't like a homicide or immigration or IRS or whatever the hell else that they fill in yes. for that they're supposed to uh-huh. not doing no- no- normal vice work. There isn't someone that they immediately deputize on on the spot to help them hunt down the Yakuza. Like, this is better. This is a good episode. Some cast characters that we've seen before. With DJ behind the camera, this episode had a lot of detail. Like they filled in a lot of emptiness that we normally get in a Vice episode where it's like, here's why and here's the end. And then there's this wishy-washy stuff in the middle. This one had a lot of detail, dotted all the I's, crossed all the T's, little stuff at the end. Maybe we have some questions on, but that might be on purpose to let you interpret it how, however you want. Um, But yeah, it's good. I liked it. I'm ready. I'm ready for next week's episode. I don't know what to expect now. But just for everybody's safety, be on the lookout for, for Choo Choo. He's <laughs> armed with a knife. He will stab you. Maybe Not he apprehend. Has the, maybe he has the penises. <laughs> maybe Choo Choo has them. Damn it. <laughs> Choo Choo had them all along. <laughs> and that's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter at go with the heat. Get us on Instagram at go with the heat. Get us on Facebook, facebook.com slash go with the heat. Guess what? Anchor.fm, Stitcher, iTunes, Google Play, YouTube. You can find us at all of those locations at go with the heat. Check out the website, go with the heat.com. You can find links to all of that stuff, all of the feeds, including the music only feed, the feed for just the This Week in Vice. You can find everything you need for, for the website, including how to contact us right there on that website. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, pals. <laughs>